Each garbage can, choice opportunity, or meeting has different access rules. In particular, every choice arena has an access structure or a social boundary of sorts that influences which persons, problems, or solutions can enter or not. The most loose structure allows for unrestricted access. All the problems, solutions, and people are allowed to enter. And this creates more energy, but it also allows problems, solutions, and participants to interfere with each other, which increases conflicts and time devoted to problems. So you have greater anarchy. And this is kind of the access structure you see at the bottom left, a democratic structure where everyone can enter every choice uh, arena. Another structure entails hierarchical access. Here, important actors, problems, and solutions are given priority access. For example, big decisions may occur in executive meetings, while unimportant issues are addressed by rank-and-file employees and subcommittees. And this might be the, the hierarchical uh, image here, the middle one, where you see certain people get to access all choice arenas and others don't. Finally, there's a specialized access structure which can occur when specialized problems and solutions have access to certain meetings, like in my school, the costs students incur when printing their papers on school printers. That may be an issue that goes to the school's technology committee. Um, journal costs may be brought up in the library committee. So certain specialists have access to certain choices that fit their expertise. So engineers get pulled into these technology committees. Um, and the diagram at the bottom shows these differing uh, kinds of access structures where in the final image you see specialists going into particular kinds of committees um, and choice arenas. Another constraint influencing access to choice arenas are deadlines. Deadlines characterize temporal boundaries and the timing of decision arenas and flows enter them. Here there can be constraints on the arrival time of problems. For example, seasonal problems like the flu or a cold, like a, what I must sound like right now from a stuffy nose. Uh, constraints on the arrival of solutions. They're quite often we run solutions and programs in one and five year plans. Uh, constraints on the arrival of participants. The timing of work days, school years, tenure cycles determines turnover. And even constraints on choice opportunities or meetings like budget schedules. So, all of this compounds to characterize decisions in organized anarchies. And decisions arise from the interaction of constraints, these access structures, and deadlines, and the dependent flows of problems or issues, solutions, and participants or decision makers. So we have this confluence of a variety of features and a more dynamic characterization of the decision process that somewhat resembles more closely the reality of decision making in many of the choice arenas of organizations. To this point, I've covered a lot of concepts in a short amount of time. Let's take the example of a faculty meeting again and work through the features I've mentioned and see what they look like. I think this example will afford you a, a more concrete sense of what the concepts mean and how to see and apply them in various cases of organizational decision making. Or rather, in, in this case, uh, uh, an instance of meaning making where a decision might not even be made, but people come to a, a deeper understanding of one another, their identities, where they stand, and what issues they're concerned about, and what solutions they're, they're uh, energized about. I'll probably riff some here on my own piecemeal experiences uh, within faculty meetings as well as kind of even meetings that I've had with my with schools and with other organizations or even with my kids kind of schooling but you can ponder some of your own experiences in choice arenas as well so here's a, a massive diagram and let me try to deconstruct what you're seeing um, let's begin with some of the problems that might flow into an academic environment um, one problem might concern space usage, right? So here we have a faculty meeting. That's the blue circle, a choice arena. And uh, we have more people at Stanford than we can situate. And this problem of space usage might be relevant or brought up at the meeting. So P1, right? Another problem could be the need for additional money or resources and whether the school has enough grant money to function well. This could be P2. Um, other problems might concern a student advising issue, P3, a troublesome student that isn't graduating. 
or even a research center losing staff, P4, say, or concerns about the university endowment and how it lost one-third of its value in the recession, P5, and how that might affect the particular faculty. So there are all these potential problems swirling in the environment, and which ones enter uh, differ. Uh, the blue circle, again, is the meeting, the arena, and let's say it's an executive committee where access is hierarchical. So we see that only the dean and associate dean enter. And finally, we have all these solutions. Um, S1 could be a solution concerning minority recruitment. S2 could be a plan to increase master student enrollments. S3 might be a new tenure policy. And S4 might be an idea to find new donors for the school. Now, not all of them will enter the choice arena. And the agenda of the meeting might have a certain order and a, and a particular time frame of, say, one hour, thereby imposing a deadline on the choice. So let's think about this. Uh, P1, if we look at P1, it, it doesn't really seem to go anywhere. It enters, it's brought up, but it isn't decided on before any solution enters. It's decision by flight. P2, on the other hand, connects or is linked to solution one, A1, A2, all linked. And uh, they get enough energy to be decided. So the decision is by problem resolution. P5 is linked to P2 while they discuss P2, but the actors never see the endowment decline being solved by increasing enrollments. So the faculty who attend agree the problem of not enough resources can be solved by increasing master students' enrollments, thereby increasing the funds gotten via tuition. So uh, that's the kind of choice decision that occurs. P5 is ultimately unconnected to solution, so another decision by flight. And then P3 and P4 never even brought up in the meeting before it ends, so the deadline affected their discussion. P1 through 5 could have affixed to the first solution, right, about minority recruitment, um, as, but it didn't have any kind of support or relevance. It wasn't related to that. Um, if it had been picked without connection to a problem, then we'd say it was a decision by oversight. So hopefully, through this, you have some kind of idea of how the streams collide or enter into the garbage can and how their ordering and deadline can matter. In this case, uh, space needs just don't go anywhere, but the concern about money and the functioning of the school is something that the deans felt like was, was worthwhile in discussing that day. And they saw certain solutions over others, like the increase in, in master's enrollment, as the most relevant, and that's where they went and selected, whereas others just didn't go anywhere. Uh, particular so solutions may have been brought up, but not really seen as connected to the problems being discussed. And eventually, like I said, uh, the, the time runs out and the arena is closed. The window is done. With all this in mind and the concrete case uh, behind us, where we have some sense of how the concepts are applied, we come to the question of how do you manage organized anarchies? How do you manage this fluidity, this dynamic? Um, how do we approach it? And there's several types of reactions that can emerge in response to a garbage can or an organized anarchy. First, a lot of individuals and managers try to be a reformer. They, they try everything they can to eliminate uh, chaotic elements from decisions. So they create greater systematicity, uh, greater order, control. And in a way, this is what a lot of corporations do, and it's what Daly and Vallis did in the Chicago school case. Um, they centralized, rationalized, fixed streams and access, et cetera. Anything to remove those chaotic, uh, dynamic elements. Second, though, you can go the opposite direction. Um, you can be an enthusiast. Here you try to discover a new vision of decision making within garbage can processes. And this is sort of what March and, and Birnbaum argue people should do in choice arenas like a faculty senate. Here, or even faculty, any kind of meeting, um, here the manager needs to realize the planning going on is largely symbolic. It's an excuse for interaction and sense making. It's a way to make people feel like they belong and to learn about views and identities of each other. The arena is more for sense making and getting observations than making decisions about much. Also, the manager is an enthusiast can view temporal sorting as a way to organize attention. The order can indicate what's more of concern for collective discussion. The enthusiast will also focus on the flows of problems and solutions and regard them as a matching market where energies and connections are mobilized. 
recognizing who's present, where links, time, and energy are sufficient, and then pressing the case is how you would approach this kind of context as an enthusiast. Last, the enthusiast would see advantages in flexible implementation, uncoordinated action, and confusion. It's okay not to decide at times, and to make choice arenas into a space of meaning making. That's how an enthusiast would view this and those kinds of organized anarchies. And then there, of course, is a middle route. You can be a pragmatist. Um, you can use garbage can processes to further your agenda. Um, the idea here is that organized anarchies are susceptible to exploitation. So as a manager, here you can time the arrival of solutions, knowing attention is scarce. As such, you can set the meeting agenda and work the order of issues. You put ones you want discussed up front. Put last the ones you know everybody uh, already agrees they need uh, and needs to be passed, but you don't want them discussed to much detail. So you put them at the end of the agenda and rush the decision so that it's quickly done. Um, another thing that you can do as a pragmatist is be sensitive to shifting interests and involvement of participants. Be opportunistic. Um, and when certain people aren't at the choice arena, press on issues and solutions you care about that they would oppose if they were present. Because they're not there, you can mobilize in that direction. Third, you can, you can abandon initiatives that are entangled with others. If streams get tangled, if other problems are affixed to your solution, um, then the opposition is present, move on. Uh, view it as an opportunity to go to other issues. And if an agenda arises that doesn't suit your interests, overload the system to protect your interests. Bring up other problems and solutions, slowing the process and making it complex. Demobilize things in that way. You can also provide other choice opportunities, other meetings to attract decision makers and problems away from choices that interest you. And this way, you open up time for the issues you're concerned with. By that, I mean you just create subcommittees, table things, send them elsewhere. So you have options on how you want to confront organized anarchy situations. Understanding how these arenas operate affords you different levers to try, and hopefully the ones related here give you some sense of how to win. I hope you find organized anarchy models useful. I find it especially helpful because it renders pathologies of choice theoretically consistent. All too often, real choice arenas are messy. And this theory embraces that mess and the dynamics, and it affords us some kind of framework for making sense of them. Uh, I find garbage can theory useful uh, and especially helpful in explaining all sorts of meetings where there are ecologies of choice and where problems and solutions are fluidly discussed. It fits policy government worlds, research and development groups, crisis management situations, and most any distributed decentralized social system trying to deal with issues like a university department, a faculty senate, a partner meeting, and so on. So I see this as, as actually a quite relevant theory in spite of what seems to be a lot of discussion about dynamics, ambiguity, and meaning making. Uh, it does have quite a bit of applicability and relevance to you as both an analyst and a manager.